This video is going to show you how to calculate the center of mass using torque. To begin with, let's start with a simple problem where I've got a beam and I've got two boxes. I've got a 20 newton box and a 50 newton box sitting on this beam and I know the distance is over from the left hand side. So what I want to do is I want to figure out a spot where I can take my hand and balance these two boxes. Where is that, that balance point? Well that balance point is located at something we call the center of mass or the center of gravity. Now the center of mass and the center of gravity are the same thing on the Earth. They don't start varying until you get into intense uh, gravitational fields like around a star or a black hole. But for us, it's all the same. So I need to find this point. Where is this location from, say, the left side where all my measurements are located? Where is that center of mass location? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with my extended free body diagram. So there's a line representing my beam, and I'm looking at the forces acting on the beam. So there are three forces acting on the beam. There's the 20 newton box acting on the beam. There's the finger pushing up at the location of the center of mass acting on the beam and then there's the 50 newton box acting on the center of beam on the beam so now this is my extended free body diagram so to find the center of mass what I'm going to do is I'll pick my pivot point and I'm going to choose the left end I can choose anywhere on this beam I can choose the right end the left end I could even choose the location of one of the forces and if I choose that location that force will disappear from my calculations altogether but for right now I'll just choose this location right here right on the left end. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I know that there's, the beam's not rotating, so the torque that's holding it up, that is where my F is times the D subscript CM, that's equal to the sum of all the torques of the forces going down, that's the 20 newtons and the 50 newtons. So I'll set this up as the torque holding it up, that's the force times the distance, is equal to 20 times 2 plus 50 times 6, because they're balancing each other out. Now the force that's holding it up, that's equal to all the weight going down. So that in this case, it's just 20 plus 50. So that means that 20 plus 50 times the distance to the center of mass is equal to the sum of the other two torques. So I do a little bit of math, and I find the distance to the center of mass is 4.86 meters from the left end of the, the beam in this case. So what are the takeaways from this process? First off, the distance to the center of mass, or center of gravity near the surface of the Earth, is equal to the sum of all the torques going down, that's all the forces going down, divided by the sum of all the forces going up, so torques divided by forces. And that's going to give you the distance to the center of mass. The other thing to take away is what we're going to use later in solving problems. If I have an irregular shaped beam, then the center of mass is not going to be in the middle. Instead, the center of mass will be somewhere that's got to be specified. So the weight of the beam acts at the center of mass. When I need to find torques, Due to the beam, I can apply the weight at the center of mass. If the beam is just a rectangle, then the problem will call the beam a uniform beam. And uniform means that it's a nice geometrical shape with equal density. In other words, what that means is the center of mass is where we expect it to be, right in the middle of the object. But this is not uniform. This is an irregular shaped beam, so I have to be given the center of mass, and that's where the weight of the beam acts. So I'll use this in calculating torques.